Hey, what's happening, guys? Today we are going to dive into the fascinating world of Transformers, exploring the powerful connection that they share with Ohm's Law. Don't worry, these aren't complex things, and you'll understand them at the end. But before we get into that, we're getting down to the end of the year here, and I just want to take a minute and thank my sponsor, Solder Stick. They have all sorts of different terminals and connectors for joining wires to other wires and terminating them to different connections. There'll be more of that at the end. But I just want to say to them, thank you so much for your support this year. I wouldn't have been here without you. So guys, check out the video at the end. And if a solder stick has something that might be useful for your life or your projects, tell them I sent you and get what you need. Again, thank you, Ryan from Solder Stick. So guys, we're going to talk about Transformers today. This is quite a tiny Transformer. <laughs> Nothing much here. Um, they play an incredibly, an incredibly crucial role in the world of electricity because they can increase or decrease voltage levels with great efficiency. So what is going on in here? Let me draw you a, a little diagram and I can try and explain it to you. So this is what we'll call the primary side. And our AC is fed in here. And yes, it must be AC. That is a key component. It only works with AC, no DC. So we have our primary side, which is simply some wire wrapped around a core. That's what we have here. This is our core. There are many different materials that can be a core. This one is a particular drawing for an iron core, which is the most common type. And then this is our... secondary this is our core I forgot to label that for you and AC is going to come out of here as well All right let's uh, zoom in so here, here we have our transformer with our primary or secondary we have an iron core in the center now when our alternating current passes through the primary coil it creates a magnetic field in the iron core. It also creates a magnetic field around itself and around here, but mainly in the iron core. Now, this magnetic field that has been, you know, created by the alternating current here will induce a voltage in the secondary coil. That's what gives transformers their name. It's the number of windings on one side versus the number of windings on the other side that allows you to transform voltage up or to transform voltage down. And like I said, it does it with great efficiency. You're able to keep the power generally in a stable area. It's not going to swing wildly on you. Now, let's talk about how Ohm's Law factors into this. Ohm's Law, as you might recall, is a fundamental principle in electric circuits. I mean, it's the basis of just about everything. And it expresses the relationship between voltage, which can be labeled as E or V, current, which we call I, and resistance, which is R. So that gives us what's known as the Ohm's Law Triangle. Draw a triangle, put a T in it, and write V-I-R. Just like that. This will help you remember it. Because whatever you're looking for, just figure it out. If you're looking for V, it's I times R. If you're looking for I, it's V over R. If you're looking for R, it's V over I. That relationship controls just about everything that goes on in 
electricity and electronics and, you know, the, the physics of charges. So there is a, a connection between them. Here's where it gets interesting. In the context of transformers, the primary coil can be seen as the source of voltage, whereas the secondary coil is the load where the voltage is transformed, and the resistance is the opposition to this transformation. Are you with me so far? So now we can take our Ohm's Law triangle and apply it more in the realm of the transformer. Because we can say a couple of uh, equations, sort of. We can say V primary, V sub P, is equal to I primary times R primary. And subsequently, V secondary is equal to I secondary times R secondary. So you see how they kind of mesh together, everything fits in place. So in essence, the voltage on the primary side is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance on the primary side. And the same relationship applies to the secondary side. And, and transformers are everywhere around us. That's why I thought it was important that we talked about this today. From power lines transferring electricity across the distances, chargers in, a, in our wall warts and in, in our, our USB chargers. Now that you can understand, you know, the difference between them and understand how everything works and fits together, I hope you have a better understanding of transformers. So before we go, I put together just a little demo to show you what's going on here. Okay, over here we have my signal generator. The Junk Tech uh, Dual Channel Signal Generator. And as you can see, it is generating a sine, word, sine wave at 10 kilohertz at 5 volts peak to peak. It's going to come out of that BNC connector there and go to them little flippity floppities right there. Now the reason we're using this is because we don't want to play with our mains AC voltage and current because that is bad and can kill you. This is relatively safe. 5 volts AC off of here. Almost no current. It's not going to hurt us. Alright, so let's go back down here to where we have our transformer. And I'm going to zoom out here. Whoop. And we're going to bring in the little tiny oscilloscope, the Zoe. Now, just to show you what's coming out of the signal generator, I will connect it up to the oscilloscope probe and turn on the output. And you see here we have 10K, 5 point, eh, right around 5 volts peak to peak. And there's our period, there's our RMS 1.63 volts. So I'm going to disconnect this now. And we're going to connect up to this little transformer. This is a little audio matching transformer, but it's fine. You see we have six connections here. Uh, where I marked the primary side, yeah. Okay, so on the left here is my primary side. And you notice there's three connections. The center connection is the center tap. We're not going to talk about it or use it in our uh, situation today. So now we have connected that 5 volts peak to peak AC sine wave on here. Now on the secondary side, we'll connect up the oscilloscope. And if you look now, you see we still have 10k frequency but our RMS has gone from 1.63 volts to 11.33 and our peak to peak has gone from 5 to 32 
you want to do the math and figure out the percentage of change, go ahead. It's far too early in the morning for me to do that. Now, that makes sense after what we just talked about with Ohm's Law. Let's swap it, switch it around. So now we will connect our AC into what was the secondary side before, which is now the primary side, the side with more turns, okay? And we'll go back to our drawing here in a minute, but let's range this, because there is, there is a signal being fed in there, but it's too small for you to see. So our 5 volts peak-to-peak -peak is now showing up as a half a volt peak to peak or 0.16 RMS still at 10K. So we've knocked the voltage down. But what I want you to remember and take away from this is what I said in the beginning. The transformer can keep the power relatively steady because what we're doing is we're trading. We If we are feeding in Let's draw another transformer here. So there's our AC, our iron core, and there's our secondary side. Now, our little audio matching transformers we're using have center taps. And those just generally get grounded. But let's say we bring in... Uh, 10 volts on this primary side and we, we hook up you know a load and a meter and we read 20 volts over here All right so we, we basically doubled our voltage but what we're doing is we're taking a lower voltage higher current and we're trading that current for voltage. So, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. You're not getting this voltage gain without giving up something. And what you're giving up is that push. You're giving up the current. But you can go the other way as well. For instance, uh, if you paid attention to the uh, series of videos I'm doing on restoring that old Gibson amplifier, um, there are... There are three transformers in it, but we'll talk about two of them. So in that thing, we have the primary and the secondary with a big iron core. And we're feeding in, you know, 120 volts. And we're getting out 600 volts. It's actually 300, zero, 300 because it is also center tapped. So between, you know, this side and here, we're reading 300 volts. And then between this side and here, we're reading 300 volts. So what we've done is we've taken that 120 volt, volts AC that we get out of our sockets here in the United States. We've sent it through this thicker wire with our higher current, uh, creating a magnetic field in the iron core here, which induces a higher voltage on this output side, but our current is now incredibly low. Maybe, I'm, I'm not even gonna guess, but I, I would say it's under 100 milliamps. So that is our AC um, power transformer. Now that's at the, the beginning end of the amplifier. Over here at the ending end of the amplifier, we have a smaller transformer that is called our output matching transformer. And it looks more like this. We are going to take that AC signal, which is, you know, up around 300 volts, but at that very low you know, under 100 milliamps current. With many windings on this input side, we're going to induce that magnetic field in the iron core. And then on this side, we're going to get very low voltage. 
uh, you know, a couple volts, maybe under 10 volts. So, yeah, we'll, we'll say, you know, less than 10 volts. But our current has increased to push those speakers. So transformers are the transformers of the electrical world. And they allow you to push voltage up or pull it down. But the trade-off is the current. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, don't forget, thank you to our sponsor, Solder Stick. And I'd also like to take a minute and say thank you to the patrons. You know, um, this has been a horrible year for me on YouTube in regards to getting paid, as in I'm not. I receive a few payments here and there, but a, a great amount of the money is outstanding still outstanding thousands and uh without the patrons and without solder stick supporting me uh, this channel would have failed this year so thank you all so very very much that's it i'm out peace today's video is brought to you by solder stick solder stick makes quick waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on they sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation, waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits, Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.